Hi, this is uh, John Whitaker for the Probability One class, and this is our 28th video lecture. And uh, I want to start off by looking at something we had done last time and to do an application of it. As a matter of fact, we're going to do two applications of a corollary that we proved last time. But first, we're going to recall the corollary. And so, what we were talking about was a compound random variable. And our corollary says, uh, if we had S sub n be a compound random variable, and suppose that the sequence that makes up S sub n are positive integer value random variables. Suppose that we, for notation sake, let alpha sub j represent the probability that x sub 1 is equal to j, where j is bigger than 0. Um, and M is a random variable that is independent of the sequence of X of 1, uh, grab or X of 2, uh, with the probability that M is equal to N being equal to N times the probability that big N is equal to little n, or with the expected value of N, where N is equal to little n is equal to 1, 2, 3. Then uh, the probability that the compound random variable is equal to 0 is the same as the probability that N is equal to 0. And the probability that S sub n is equal to k, uh, some integer k, uh, that's equal to 1 over k times the expected value of n times the sum as j runs from 1 to k of j alpha sub j times the probability that S sub n minus 1 is equal to k minus j. So that's the primary um, part of this corollary. And in terms of uh, coming to an example where we can use this corollary, um, we'll start off with this uh, fact. We'll, and this is something we did last time as well. We'll let n be a Poisson random variable uh, with mean lambda and let m be, the rand uh, be a random variable such that m satisfies uh, the conditions for a corollary to apply. That is, the probability that m is equal to n is equal to n times the probability that big N is equal to little n over the expected value of big N, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, forever. Then what we showed is that m minus 1 is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda. Okay, with that having been said, let us look at an example. And uh, what I want to tell you is this corollary that we're going to be using for the example is really a recursive corollary. Um, that gives us a recursive formula that we're going to use. And in the first example, that recursion isn't, uh, I mean, it's clearly being used, but it's a little bit hidden. Okay? I'll point that out. But in the second example, everything's exposed. Okay, so here's the uh, problem. And this is a problem for our text. We let S sub n be a compound random variable with n being Poisson. with mean lambda equal to 4. And then we're going to let the probability that x sub i equals to i equals to 1 fourth for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Stopping there. And the question is, is to find the probability that s sub n is equal to 5. Okay, so that's our problem, and uh, we're going to use that corollary uh, to come up with this answer. So here's a, a solution. Before I uh, write up the solution, 
I'd like to tell you that for the particular answer we're looking for, uh, I don't get the same answer that's in the book. I think the author has made a slight mistake on the last step in terms of uh, his answer and the way that I'm interpreting the problem. So uh, all the other parts, I get the same thing as the author. Uh, but here's what I'm going to start off with in terms of the solution. Uh, since S of N is a compound uh, random variable, okay, uh, then we have a sequence of random variables okay. so it's an infinite sequence x of 1, x of 2 and so forth but here you know, we're only having x of 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so that was kind of maybe disturbing in terms of the way the problem uh, is written and we have to figure out how to interpret it and so here's my interpretation. Here's what I understand. But the information that was given is enough. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a sequence x of 1, x of 2 of independent Identically distributed random variables okay. since the probability of X of I equals I is equal to one fourth. One fourth for I equals one, two, three, and four. Then let's explore this a little bit. The probability that X of one is equal to one is equal to one fourth. The probability that x of 2 equals to 2 is 1 4. The probability that x of 3 equals to 3 is equal to 1 4. And the probability that x of 4 equals to 4, that equals to 1 4. Now, since The, uh, X, uh, since the sequence x of 1, x of 2, and so forth, are identically distributed, then for any q that's a natural number, q and j, the natural number, J, we have uh, the probability that x of q is equal to 1. That should be the same thing as the, the probability that x of 1 is equal to 1, which is 1 4. And the probability that x of q equals to 2, well, that's the same thing as the probability that x of 2 equals to 2, and that's equal to um, 1 4. And the probability of x of q equals to 3, that equals to 1 4, and the probability of x of q equals to 4, well that's equal to 1 4, 
And then the probability that x is x of q is equal to anything else, z. That's going to be equal to zero for all uh, z element of uh, the natural numbers, which we're symbolizing by j here, with a z being bigger than four. Okay. Now here, I just want you to note that the q, I'm sorry, the x. So Q uh, they're greater than zero. They're out the values. One four of them, they're greater than zero. And so we can apply the previous correlate. Here was the uh, main part of that previous corollary. Uh, the probability that S of n is equal to k is equal to 1 over k times the expected value of n. The sum as j runs from 1 to k of j times the probability of x of 1 equaling to j times the probability of s of m minus 1 equals to k minus j. So that was the main part of the previous corollary. And so applying that to our problem, which was the probability that s of n is equal to 5, here's what we get. We have the probability that S of n equals to 5 is equal to it be one fifth, that's 1 over k, the expected value of n. Well, n in our problem was a Poisson random variable uh, with lambda equal to 4, so the expected value is just 4, times the sum as j runs from 1 to k. K here is 5. J times the probability that X of 1 equals to J times the probability that S of M minus 1 equals to 5 minus J. I think I got that in. Alright, so that's equal to, in the expanded form of this sum, it's 4 fifths times, well, that would be 1 times the probability that x of 1 equals to 1, uh, <clears throat> times the probability that s of m minus 1 is equal to, it would be 4, plus uh, 2 uh, times the uh, probability that x of uh, 1 equals to 2, times the probability that s of m minus 1 is equal to uh, 5 minus 2, uh, that's 3. Plus, it would be 3 times the probability that x of 1 equals to 3, times the probability that s of m minus 1 is equal to uh, 2, when j is equal to 3. Plus, here I would have uh, 4 times the probability uh, that x of 1 equals to 4 times the probability that s of m minus 1 equals to 1, that's when j is equal to 4, uh, plus this would be uh, 5 times the probability that x of 1 equals to 5 uh, times the probability that s of m minus 1 equals to 0. That's what we have. Okay. Uh,
So I'm going to do a little bit of simplification here. This is going to be four fifths times one. The probability of the x of one equals to one. That's one fourth. And I'm going to leave this as is. Plus <clears throat> two times one fourth, because that's the probability of x of one equals to two. That's the probability of s of m minus one equals to three. Plus three times one fourth times the probability that s of m minus one is equal to two. Plus it's four times one fourth times the probability that uh, uh, s of m minus one is equal to one. And then plus five, and the probability that x of one is equal to five. Well, that's zero. And this is where my interpretation of the problem doesn't match, I believe, what uh, the book's answer is. But I think it's, I think that that's what it should be. He, he takes this to be equal to one fourth as well. I just think it's a typo. Anyway, that's what we have. Now we need to compute these probabilities that s of m minus one is equal to two or equal to 4, or equal to 3, and equal to 1. And that's where this recursion will come into play, but it's a little bit hidden here. So, the probability, even though this isn't going to be needed, the probability of s of m minus 1 equals to 0, by our corollary, even though I didn't emphasize it in this problem, this probability of m is equal to 0. Well, that's equal to e, remember n is Poisson distributed, with uh, parameter 4. So it's even minus lambda, that's minus 4. Lambda, which is 4, uh, uh, to the uh, 0, so that's just 1. All over 0 factorial, so we just get even minus 4. Okay. Really, I calculated that, but it's not going to be something that's uh, going to be so valuable uh, uh, directly, but indirectly. Now, another thing we need is the probability of s of m minus 1 is equal to 1. Okay. Now, if you use the corollary again, the s of m minus 1 is uh, a compound random variable, and m minus 1 is Poisson with uh, parameter lambda. So what this is going to be equal to, it's going to be 1 over 1, that's 1 over k, 1 here, 1 over 1. The expected value of m minus 1 the sum as j runs from 1 to k, which is 1, times j times the probability x of 1 equals to j times the probability that s, and I here I'm going to write down m sub 1 minus 1 equals to 1 minus j. Okay, this is not s of m minus 1. It's s sub m sub 1 minus 1. That's a new compound. Uh, random variable, and we're talking about this m sub 1 minus 1. Well, uh, look, uh, this m sub 1 minus 1 by the fact that I wrote on the board and read to you to start this lecture, this is going to be Poisson with, uh, uh, with parameter lambda, which is 4 in this case, because this is Poisson. So with that being the case, here for this we're going to get uh, equal to 1, uh, this expected value here is going to be um, uh, 4, here this is just going to be 1, there's only one thing in our sum, this is 1, 4, and this guy is uh, 
probability that s of sub n minus 1 uh, s of m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. And that is the probability that n is equal to 0. So it's e to the minus 4. And uh, that gets us the 1 fourths canceled with 4 here. We're just left with e to the minus 4. Now, um, the probability that s of m minus 1 equals to 2, this is going to be, using the corollary again, it's 1 half times expected value of m minus 1 times the sum, if j equals 1 to 2, of j times the probability that x sub 1 equals to j times the probability that s, again, this new compound random variable, if you will, s of m minus 1 equals to 2 minus j. And that's going to be equal to 1 4 times 4 uh, times, here we have 1 times 1 4, and then here, uh, the probability that uh, s of n sub 1 uh, minus 1 is equal to, uh, it would be, when j is equal to 1, would be 1. Well, to do that, we have to do this type of process again, okay? Where I wouldn't have just, this would be probability s of m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 1, which would have all of this result here, but here I have maybe a probability of s of m minus, uh, s sub uh, m sub 2 minus 1 uh, equal to 1 minus j. The same thing here. But the s of m sub 2 minus 1 would again be Poisson. And so what we would get is uh, 1 4, that's what we got, 1 half times 1 4. Uh, times 1 plus 1 4. Uh, I'll write this down. Is the probability that S sub M sub 1 minus 1 uh, equals to 1 plus, this would be 2 times 1 4 times the probability that S sub M sub 1 minus 1 equals to 0, which we have calculated. And so, to calculate this part, we would do the corollary again. And then that would be equal to 2 times, it would be 1 4 e to the minus 4 uh, plus it's uh, 1 half times e to the minus 4. And that's equal to 3 halves e to the minus 4. Now the probability that s of m uh, minus 1 is equal to 3. Uh, is equal to, using the corollary, one-third times the expected value of m minus 1 times the sum as j runs from 1 to 3 of j times the probability that x sub 1 equals to j times the probability that s sub m sub 1 minus 1 uh, equals to 3 minus j. So that's equal to, if we expand that sum, that's equal to one third. Here, m minus one was Poisson. That uh, has a uh, kind of variable, um, uh, its expected value is lambda, so that's four, times the sum, that's going to be one, and then times the probability that x of one is equal to one. Well, that's one fourth, so I'm just going to put that in. Uh, 
times the probability that S of M sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 3 minus 1, that's 2, plus um, it would be uh, 2 times the probability that X sub 1 is equal to 2, which is equal to 1 4, times the probability that S of M sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 3 minus 2, that's 1. And this is equal to uh, plus the probability, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 3 uh, times 1 4 times the probability that S sub M sub 1 minus 1 equals to 0. So this is going to be equal to a four thirds. Here we have computed this already. Well, not really. I'm sorry. The m sub one. Uh, so we would have to use the corollary on this. But m sub one minus one is going to be uh, uh, Poisson, and so what we're going to do is get the same result as what we had before, uh, which is listed right here. So this is 1 4 times 3 half e uh, to the minus 4. Okay, it's Poisson with the uh, parameter lambda, and that's 4 here. And so we get the same result. Plus, here this is going to be 1 half. Uh, this guy, uh, we have it computed, but it's the same thing as what we get for s of m minus 1 equal to 1, and so that's going to be equal to, so this one half, it's e to the uh, minus 4, and this is plus, this is going to be 3 fourths, e to the minus 4, okay. and that's what we get, and that's equal to, okay, so you do this work, you end up getting, uh, well, you end up getting 13 over of 6 times e to the minus 4. But you compute that. That's what you get. You make sure I didn't make a mistake. Yes. All right, great. Now, the probability that s of m minus 1 is equal to 4, this is the last one we really need, is 1 fourth times the expected value of m minus 1 times the sum as j runs from 1 to 4, again here I'm using the corollary, of j times the probability that x sub 1 equals to j times the probability that s sub m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 4 minus j. Okay, now that's equal to, uh, it's, uh, well, it's 1 over 4, then the expected value of the m minus 1, which is 4, times, this will be 1 times 1 4, times the probability that uh, s of m sub 1 minus 1 uh, is equal to 3, plus, uh, using that, that sum, it would be 2 times 1 4, times the probability that s of m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 2 plus uh, 3 times 1 4 times uh, the probability that s of m uh, sub 1 minus 1 uh, is equal to 1 times, I had not enough room, I'm sorry, plus um, it was 4 times 1 4 times the probability that s of m sub 1 minus 1 uh, is equal to uh, 0. 
And this is going to be equal to, well, this is just one, so I won't write that. So this is um, one four. This guy we, in a sense, have calculated is 13 over 6 times e to the minus 4 plus, here this is 1 half, so this next quantity was 3 halves times e to the minus 4, then this is 3 fourths times e to the minus 4, and then this was 1 times e to the minus 4. And so when we compute this, we end up getting, so you can work with this, 73 um, e to the minus 4 over 24. Okay, we're ready to answer the question now. And so, the probability that S of N is equal to 5 is equal to 4 fifths, okay, so that's 1 over 5 times the expected value of the N minus 1, which is 4. And then it's 1 fourth, uh, 73 uh, over 24, e to the minus 4, plus, this will be 1 half, it's 2 times 24. And then this was uh, 13 over 6 times e to the minus 4, plus, this is going to be 3 fourths times 3 halves times e to the minus 4, and then it's plus e to the minus 4, and then I'm going to say plus 0. This was the last term, which I'm, uh, the way I'm interpreting the problem is that it's going to be 0, and that's different from what the book has. But I think it's just a step in the book. So this is 4 fifths. Uh, well, you can do the work. What you get is this is equal to 381 over 120 e to the minus 4. Well, I would like to do another example, um, and it's uh, for a compound random variable where we use this corollary, um, and so it's going to be based on uh, the n, given the number of random variables involved, uh, for s of n, uh, not being Poisson, but rather being binomial. And so, as we had a fact that I had recalled to start this lecture, as we had proven in the last lecture, we have a similar fact this time. It says, let n be a binomial uh, random variable with parameters r and p. Let, so R is the number of times we did the trial, and P is the probability of success. Let M be a random variable such that the probability of M equaling to N, we're just getting the right set is equal to n times the probability of big N equals to n over the expected value of n. Okay, and here n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Then, so here's the conclusion, m minus 1 is a binomial random variable with 
with parameters r minus 1 and t. We're going to prove this fact. And before I go to prove this fact, let me tell you that this fact is, even though it's very similar to the previous fact with the Poisson uh, random variable, it's a little bit different in that the m minus 1 in the previous fact was Poisson with the same parameters. This m minus 1 doesn't have the same parameters as n. It has r minus 1. Um, so let's prove this fact. <clears throat> so we let n be a binomial random variable. with parameter uh, R and P let M be a random variable with I should say such that for the setup of the problem, the probability that m is equal to n is equal to n. Uh, this should be yeah, probability m is equal to n. So n times the probability of n equaling n over the expected value of n, and this is for n equal one to then, the probability that m minus 1 is equal to n, that's the same thing. That's the same thing uh, <clears throat> as the probability that m is equal to m plus 1 by uh, <clears throat> the property, uh, the probability of m equal to n. This is equal to n plus 1 uh, times the probability that <clears throat> n is equal to n plus 1 all over the uh, expected value of n. And then this is going to be equal to, well, it's n plus 1. The probability that n is equal to n plus 1, well, big n is binomial, so uh, equal to n plus 1. We had r trial, so it's r, uh, choose n plus 1, I think. Okay, and then here, I, uh, you know, this quantity right here is uh, was true for, I should have said this, n equal to 0, 1, 2, so that we worry about what the big m can be equal to. Uh, here, I, I really should have said it for big M minus 1. This is for N uh, equaling to 0, uh, 1, 2, okay, and so forth. Okay, anyway, it's correct. R choose N, uh, uh, N plus 1, and then it was uh, probability of success raised to the N plus 1 times 1 minus probability of the chance of success, the chance of failure, I should say raised to the r minus the quantity n plus 1, which is r minus n minus 1. So that's this. Over the expected value of n, well, the expected value of a binomial uh, was the number of times we did it, which is r, uh, times uh, the chance of success, which is p. Okay, that's what we have. So <clears throat> we'll work with this in the following way. This is n plus 1. Here, this is r factorial over... This is uh, the R minus N minus 1 factorial over N minus, I'm sorry, it's N plus 1 in this part. Factorial P to the N plus 1, 1 minus P to the R minus N minus 1. 
And this is equal to, here, uh, we, the n plus 1 and the n plus 1 factorial will cancel. Uh, oh, I forgot something. And this is all over. Gosh, it's all over. RP. I said, this is equal to the n plus 1, n plus 1 factorial will cancel. We have R uh, factorial. Um, here, this would be R minus 1, if you will, minus n. Uh, factorial, here's n minus 1. Or, sorry, it's uh, just n uh, factorial. I'm going to put this R, P, here in this bottom part of this fraction. Here's P to the n plus 1, 1 minus P to the R minus n minus 1. Now this simplifies. Well, there was an R factorial and R in the bottom, so this R minus 1 factorial over here, this is R minus 1 minus N factorial. Uh -uh. And here's an N factorial. There was a P in the bottom, and there's a P to the N plus 1 at the top, so it's P to the N. And here, this is 1 minus P, and we could rewrite this as R minus 1 minus N. Wait a minute. This is the same thing as r minus 1, choose n, p to the n, 1 minus p to the r minus 1 minus n, that's the PML of binomial with parameters uh, r minus 1 and p. So, m minus 1 is binomial with parameter r minus 1 and p. That's what we're saying. And that concludes the, the facts. And so now I'm going to do an example. Identically distributed, random variables.
Okay. Um, so random uh, variables. With n being uh, in independent of the sequence x of one, x of two, forever, then we let uh, p. So x sub 1 equal to j equal to alpha sub j. So for notation, that's what we'll write down. So here's our problem. It says find the probability that s sub n equals to 3 in terms of um, alpha sub j, j moves, r and p, the chance of success. Okay, so here's our solution. So we'll be using that corollary. The probability that S of N is equal to 3 is equal to 1 third times the expected value of N times the sum as J runs from 1 to 3 of j times alpha sub j, uh, that's the probability that x of 1 is equal to uh, j, times the probability that s of m minus 1 uh, is equal to uh, 3 minus uh, j. Now, that's going to be equal to one-third, okay, the expected value of uh, n here was r times p, because it was a uh, binomial, and then it's 1 times alpha sub 1 times the probability of s sub n minus 1 is equal to 2, plus 2 times alpha sub 2 times the probability of s of m minus 1 is equal to uh, 1 plus, so I need some more room, uh, it's 3 times alpha sub 3 times the probability of s of m minus 1 was equal to 0. Okay. Now, please just want to calculate this. The probability that s of m minus 1 equals to 0 is uh, the probability that m minus 1 equals to 0. And that's, okay, now, well, m minus 1 is binomial with parameters r minus 1 and p. And this is going to be equal to 1 minus p. It would be, it would be r uh, minus 1 to 0. So that's just 1. p to the 0, that's just 1. And it's 1 minus p to the r minus 1. That's what we get. Now, the probability that s of m minus 1 equals to 1, using our um, corollary to this, it's 1 over 1, 1 over k, times the expected value, the m sub 1, times the sum, as j runs from 1 to 1, of j alpha sub j times the probability, I'll write down as s, so m sub 1 minus 1 equals to 1 minus j. Okay, look. <clears throat> this is equal to 1. This uh, uh, m minus 1 is binomial with parameters r minus 1 and p. So that's its expected values, r minus 1 times p. Here, this sum is just 1 sum. So it's 1 times alpha sub 1 
And the probability that S of M sub 1 is equal to, uh, well, be 1 minus 1 would be 0. Now, M sub 1 minus 1 uh, is going to be uh, binomial with parameters. It's going to be R minus 2 and P. And so here I'm going to get to write down 1 minus P. Okay. Uh, to the R minus 2. That's what it is. Okay, so this guy had a different answer uh, than this guy. Okay? That was kind of hidden in the previous example we did. Need some more room. You know how we uh, ended early uh, for that two-hour lecture, six minutes early, well, and maybe one minute early the previous one, but we're going to make up for it today. So, <clears throat> not by a lot, but we're going to make up for it. Now, <clears throat> the probability that S of M minus 1 is equal to 2, that's 1 over 2 using the corollary. And expect the value of M minus 1, and then this will be the sum as J runs from 1, to 2 of j alpha sub j times the probability that s of m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 2 minus j, okay, which is equal to 1 half r minus 1 uh, times p, that's where we are, times, okay, the sum. Well, first is j is 1, and it's alpha sub 1. And then this is going to be the probability that s of m uh, sub 1 minus 1 equals to 1 plus 2 times alpha sub 2 times the probability that s of m sub 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. That has not so bad to calculate. Okay. <clears throat> what about this? So here we have, if you will, 1 half r minus 1 p one, uh, alpha sub 1. Here, um, this is going to be uh, using the corollary on just this part. It's going to be equal to, it's going to be 1 over 1, um, the expected value of m sub 1 minus 1, uh, <clears throat> times the sum as j runs from 1 to, here's k, so it's just 1, of alpha sub j, and j times alpha sub j, <clears throat> um, and then times the probability to S sub M, something else, sub 2 minus 1, uh, equals to, uh, it'd be 1 minus J, so that's 0, plus this guy is 2 times alpha sub 2. This is, okay, so M had parameter R minus 1, M sub 1, I'm sorry, M minus 1 had parameter uh, R minus 1. M sub 1 minus 1 had parameter R minus 2. So this was 1 minus P to the R minus 2. Okay, I'm sure I didn't write anything wrong. I didn't. And so this is equal to, let's forget, don't forget those brackets. 1 half <clears throat> R minus 1 to the P times alpha sub 1. Here, uh, this is 1, this uh what is this parentheses here? This parentheses is alpha sub 1 times all of this. Okay? So, uh, but all of this is just one term. So it's alpha sub 1. This is uh, r, r minus 1, r minus 2. So it's r minus 2 uh, times p. And then here, this is 1 times alpha sub 1. So there's another alpha sub 1. And the probability of s sub n minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, let's see, this was. We had uh, uh, m minus 1 was r minus 1. This is r minus, this is r minus 3. So this is uh, 1 minus p to the r minus 3. Let me check that out. Yeah, that's right. Plus 2, alpha sub 2, 1 minus p to the r minus 2. <laughs> uh -huh. 
And so if you want, uh, we can move on to the uh, last calculation here or something uh, to compute. The last part of the calculation, what I should say. So the original problem. This is fascinating. The probability that S of N is equal to three is equal to one third. RP times alpha sub 1 times 1 half R minus 1 uh, to the P. Oh gosh, I don't have that room. So uh, let me write it down here. So it's equal to 1 third RP times alpha sub 1 times 1 half uh, times R minus 1 times P times alpha sub 1 squared times R minus 2 times P times 1 minus P to the R minus 3 plus 2 alpha sub 2 times 1 minus P to the R minus 2. That ends that parentheses. Okay. Plus 2 alpha sub 2 times alpha sub 1 r minus 1 times p times 1 minus p to the r minus 2 that parenthesis plus 3 alpha sub 3 times 1 minus p to the r minus 1 that ends the brackets and this is equal to 1 third this is the way the book writes the answer. R times P times alpha sub 1 times R minus 1 times P all over 2 times alpha sub 1 squared P times R minus 2 times 1 minus P to the R minus 3 plus uh, 2 alpha sub 2, 1 minus P to the R minus 2. Okay, that plus, this isn't quite all the answer, plus R times P times 2 times alpha sub 2 all over 3 times R minus 1 P alpha times 1 minus P to the R minus 2 uh, wait just a second I think it's plus, this is alpha sub 3 times R, yeah, alpha sub 3 times R, P uh, times 1 minus P to the R minus 1. And that's the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, that's enough work for today. Thank you for your time and patience.